And then they too went into um, specifically what this case is about. And so they summed it up a little bit differently, which is not unexpected. And that is that this case surrounds the Star Marie Jones interview. Um, where the statements were made and they went through them one by one um, and they made sure to preference that you know the issue here is whether uh, no reasonable person could believe it was plaintiff in the beer bottle video um, which is a, the video that supposedly depicted Cardi B doing it uh, I believe they called it a ba something the, the, the base the basing act. yeah the basing act um, um, they also stated that um, I, I, I got it. Um, they also started talking about the, the herpes claims. They've made uh, the point several times that during that video that um, vaginal herpes was never mentioned, that well, it was gen actually, wasn't gentle, gentle herpes. it's the same thing, it was never mentioned and that there were, they were referring to cold sores on Cardi B's mouth. So they then showed several pictures of Cardi B and Offset where they supposedly had cold sores. Um, they then moved on to the comment about HPV. They said that there was only one clip where Tasha K actually mentioned HPV um, and showed the entire clip where at the end she states, I can't confirm or deny that Cardi B had HPV. Um, they then moved on to, to the prostitution claim which got a little bit interesting because it turned into a bit of a debate over what the word ho means and they showed several videos where cardi b referred to herself as a ho they referred to some uh, testimony from tasha k where she said she refers to her friends as a ho and it's another for uh, word for for bitch so it got into a little bit of a debate over that um, they then went into the drug use comments um, and tried to create an imagery for the jury where they were saying that Cardi B admitted to using um, several other drugs and saying that it was a bit absurd for her to now claim that she's defamed because they're alleging that she didn't use specifically cocaine. Well, well, well hold on for a second. Some, some, some of the uh, arguments by the, the defense, uh, one of the things the defense brought up is the fact that uh, Offset never came to testify, nor did Offset sue uh, Tasha K. And I thought that was an interesting uh, uh, presentation, as well as how they, it, it appeared that they were putting Cardi's music on trial by referencing that the thing she was saying uh, she was actually omitting in her music. And I've seen this in a lot of cases involving uh, rappers where they try to use the music as a tool to try to con convict someone. Can you talk about uh, how the jury may view the fact that Offset didn't sue her and or and he spoke about that, but as well as why you think that him not being there is significant. So I didn't get through all of them that was going to come up, but one of the things that is the job of the defendant is to poke holes in the plaintiff's case and show where they could, it's their burden of proof. So it's important to show the jury where they could or may have been able to provide better evidence, but didn't. So um, for each defamatory statement, the defense did attempt to point out where other evidence might have been beneficial, but it was not provided. For example, um, in the adultery claim, uh, Offset didn't come and testify in the case. In the terms of whether or not Cardi B has cold sores and herpes, again, they said that her husband didn't didn't come and testify. In the term of you know prostitution, they said that um, several of her um, friends that were worked with her back then didn't come and testify testify um, and so it was just really an effort to point out that there could be better evidence and accept it but they didn't provide it it was just Cardi B's testimony okay so I want to I'm gonna delve more into that when I do my recap but I want to also speak about the the judges charges to the jury then we go into the verdict um, so there were uh, well there's some other things I wanted to point out really quick about we need to go over the rebuttal Okay. Um, because although I'm pointing out the fact that defendant um, poked some holes or tried to poke some holes, um, plaintiff's counsel did get an opportunity to come back up and address each of those with 
evidence that came out in the case, as well as address some of the um, statements made by counsel. So she did come back up and say that, you know, there, she put up some posts, for example, with the herpes comments and said that if uh, Tasha K was not discussing vaginal herpes, then why in some of her tweets did she say, uh, make comments about uh, Cardi B possibly having vaginal herpes? So kind of contradicting and pointing out that the defense was not necessarily being forthcoming with some of the evidence that they were presenting and saying was um, not actionable. Can I, let me just yeah. jump in there real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when the when the rebuttal came about, I noticed how the uh, Lisa Moore, when she was a, when she was talking about the the uh, the inconsistencies or uh, misstatement of facts, she looked directly <laughs> at the defense's table, and I thought that was powerful because when she was talking about Cardi B, she looked at Cardi B when she was explaining certain things. Then when she was talking about the defense, she looked at them, and I saw that connection that she was make, trying to make, and, and I guess what she was trying to project to the jury. Uh, is When you are doing cases like this, do you use those type of tactics? No, I actually uh, thought that was interesting. Um, we have a saying in law, if the uh, law is not on your side, argue the facts. If the, you know, the facts are not on your side, argue the law. If neither of them are on your side, attack counsel. Um, so from my personal legal perspective, I felt like it was a bit of an attack on counsel which could have you know, several different meanings or reasons. She could also just be using it strategically um, to try to make an impact for the jury. She tried to insinuate that counsel was not being honest about some of the testimony and that they were just making things up and i.e. that they were no better than their client. So um, she definitely was trying to make an impact and then you know, the verdict will show whether that was successful or not. Well, what I think also, who also made an impact to the jury was there was two instances where the judge had to remind uh, uh, attorney uh, Olga that she could not inject her own opinions when she's uh, providing uh, a closing. Yeah, so during the closing, when we were discussing the DeBasis Act with a beer bottle in that video, um, when, when uh, defense counsel was trying to poke holes in plaintiff's case, she said that um, plaintiff's counsel was resting on the fact that it was very clear and that nobody could mistake uh, Cardi B for the individual in that video. She made a couple of points, and one was that if that was the case, why didn't they play the whole video during their case in chief? Why did they wait for defense to, to play it? And then two, um, kind of pointing out that to her, as the attorney, that the individual in the video looked a lot like Cardi B, where the court paused, um, told the jury to disregard the statement and to strike it from the, the record because it is improper, and it is, for an attorney to insert themselves into the case by stating their individual beliefs. Um, he then had to do it later on in, the, in her closing uh, on another instance. I don't remember the exact uh, instance that it was, but she did get admonished twice for inserting her own opinions. You know, I talked earlier about the playing of the, 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 pornograph the pornographic video and the fact that the defense offered it into uh, evidence. Do you think that it, they should p perhaps uh, stipulate that and perhaps uh, the reason why the plaintiff didn't want to enter into evidence is because of one, they kind of, you know, proved it when they were showing Cardi's tattoos and then they were showing the girl had no tattoos and I think for me, I thought it was more, in, uh, I think it was more inflammatory for the jury to, whoever were the in, uh, into, into that, into evidence, they, the jury might look at, look at look at a little differently. No, I don't think that there was any reason why they needed to play the video or not. I think that it goes to the weight of the evidence. Um, basically what that means is it's up to the jury to decide whether they believe it or not. I think the defense counsel did point out some um, good things regarding the timeline of that video and that there was no test video and that there was no testimony of when Cardi B got her tattoos and if when that video was made that she would have had those tattoos. That was that was actually very good testimony that was not addressed by plaintiff when they went back up and did their rebuttal. Um, but again, it's the weight of the evidence. It's for the jury to decide who they believe and who they don't. And so, the, uh, you know, more of what's I think important is the arguments towards credibility um, when lies were told, because that will influence this, influence the jury's decision on who they want to believe and who they don't. Well, let's talk about 
uh, possibly why the, the, the plaintiff wasn't able to address that. They have a they have a, a, a clock a stopwatch in the courtroom, and each side gets a certain amount of time. She had the uh, Lisa Moore had 17 minutes to do her rebuttal, and I think the judge gave her probably a minute and a half over. And I don't know if that would have been enough time to you know get that point in. But I thought that you know maybe the judge could have threw her a bone. I don't think it would have had. You know, I know judge has rules, but give her two more minutes to make a make a closing because there was a lot of evidence there. Um, and that's a, I guess that's a, you know, a subjective decision the judge made. Um, yeah, I mean, typically you do have a time limit, and the court generally sticks to it for, re, you know, to balance out. Um, you know, defense does not get a rebuttal. So if you give them, quote unquote, right. a bone, it could be deemed improper. It could be grounds for reversal, and no judge wants to be reversed. So they, they do stick to the time limits that are given, and they do try to be very fair. So, you know, point out, we as attorneys know we have time limits, so you have to be strategic in what you choose to address. And, you know, she did not choose to address that, probably because there, in her mind there were more important aspects of um, the case to address during that time period, and she just didn't get to it. Two other things that I heard that I thought was kind of interesting, and this goes to the uh, medical records and the expert witness. Uh, the uh, de defense tried to uh, insinuate that the medical records that Cardi B had were I guess false or fake because she said because her name wasn't on it but the plaintiff pointed out that she's a celebrity and her name typically they use aliases they don't, you know because most celebrities don't do that is that correct yes yeah, so um that goes to the herpes and hpv defamatory statement um plaintiffs produced or introduced into evidence some doctor's reports that show that cardi b does not have herpes or hpv um, defense then got up and tried to point out the problems or the fallacies or why that evidence is not conclusive on that issue. And one of those reasons was because her name is not on those uh, those tests. Um, to which, in the rebuttal, plaintiff tried to sanitize that or or make it so that it's not that significant by saying that all artists use aliases and that's what is on that report. Okay. Well during pre-trial and during evidentiary hearings, wouldn't it have been vetted that ever, the, the medical records? Would they just offer that up? Well, this is a medical result. Wouldn't that have been examined prior to coming to the, the full trial to you know, do pre-trial motions? Not necessarily. Um, and that's very hard to speak on actually because one of the weak points of defense's case is that they didn't have an expert of their own um, to discuss the uh, medical records that were provided or to rebut the testimony of Cardi B psychologists. So it's it's an unknown uh, right now. Right, and so the, uh, the plaintiffs at least more pointed out that one, the lawyers are not doctors. Why did they bring the expert witness in? I thought that was powerful. Mm -hmm. Why are you guys bring, coming, on the, coming over here telling the jury that they should look at these, these records to probably be fake or not, you know, untrue when they didn't even bring their own expert witnesses in. I thought that was pretty bizarre to even question that when the evidence wouldn't have came in if it, you know, in my opinion, wouldn't have came in if it wasn't something that could have been, you know, challenged. Well, that's not true. It, it wouldn't necessarily not come in. So that's that's not Are you just 100. With me? Yeah, that's not 100% accurate. However, again, for the strength of the evidence, and I think again, kind of what plaintiffs' counsel did was attack the credibility of defense counsel when it came to that, because that tends to be a little bit more important. Who are you going to believe? A doctor's report that we provided you, or defense counsel's testimony, which is not evidence that and they did not provide you with evidence that you could take back to the jury because there was no expert testimony. That's really kind of what she's trying to point out. You have the ability as the jury to decide who you want to believe and who is more credible. And is it going to be a doctor who's, who might have used an alias on a, on a test result for her privacy, or is it defense counsel? Right. Right. Okay. So do you see any major misses? Well, I won't say that. Do you, who do you think, who do you think, based on the totality of the closings, as well as the evidence, made their case? I think they both made their case, to be honest with you. It's, it's a question of, you know, who is the jury going to believe as they're going through the elements of the case to see if they're satisfied or not. Uh, 
they both did their job as attorneys. The you know, plaintiff's counsel pointed out that they believe that they have proven all of the statements that they are alleging are defamatory or false conclusively and or no evidence was presented to contradict the fact that it, it's, it's, it's false. So they did their job. They showed that Tasha Kay didn't care if those statements came down, that she was going to, to gain as much financial profit as she could from these statements and that she did it to annoy Cardi B and that they had this tit for tat going on that, you know, may be enough evidence for the jury to prove that she was acting in bad faith or, or with malice. And then they proved the damages. Then defense came up and they tried to point out specifically what was wrong with that. And they did a very good job of doing that. Some of those points might resonate with some of the jurors and could lead them to decide in Tasha Kay's favor. So they both did a good job of, of, of doing what they needed to do as attorneys for each case. Well, I heard something that I thought was interesting with uh, what Lisa Moore said and how she showed that the husband it was equally complicit in, in the things that was going on towards Cardi. What I thought was interesting that, that she said, well, the, 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 the wife said, you know, is accusing the husband, the husband is accusing the wife. How powerful was that? When the wife is accusing the husband and the husband is accusing the wife on the stand through, the, you know, deposition and direct testimony and course examination, I think that would hold a lot of power, you know, you know, two couples married and they, question you know i don't know what the strategy was that you know what that was all about that didn't make any sense and uh, we're talking we're going back to the uh back to the testimony and how you know they obviously one may have purchased the other on the stand um i you know honestly i don't think that that's going to have the effect that it was intended for that testimony is for liability purposes and and one of the things that the jury has to decide is whether the company and tasha k are jointly and severally liable for the damage or if it could be separated out and you can't get to her personal assets. I'm not sure that testimony is going to get the jury where they need to go, but that was the point of showing that um, both uh, both Tasha Kay and her husband are claiming that they don't have responsibility for this business and claiming that they don't know each other's roles in this business when they are the only ones who are responsible for it. And that comes into play when you're dealing with a, a concept called alter ego and whether liability can be um, applied to a company. So I don't, it's, it's complicated and I don't think that it necessarily hit home for, for the jury. Okay, so guys, we, we're gonna take a 30 second break, 30 second break. So I want you guys to go grab some popcorn and we'll be right back, 30 seconds.